So we are in the van and we are leaving Cusco. We are now on the fourth leg of our trip to Montepichu. We are headed into the Sacred Valley. We spent the night at a hotel in Cusco, which was wonderful. And now we are going to enjoy the valley. Yep. Okay. Peru is divided in 24 regions and the regions are divided in provinces and provinces in districts. That is how we divide the territory. But also we divide Peru in three main natural regions. We have the coast, we have the mountain region where is the Andes range, and we have the jungle. Right? One of the most interesting things about Peru is the really, really great diversity. Boleto Turistico is the tourist ticket. Okay. Right? So the tourist ticket we're getting at the first stop, which is for all of the sites? Yes, is the general ticket. Okay, so general ticket, and it is 130 per person. It covers uh, 10 places. 10 places, and you can only pay in souls. Yes, One, cash. Two. So you get these tickets. 130 souls each, and they're good for 10 days, and you have to write your name on them. So I'm gonna write my name on both of them and the dunk can't get in. Ah. <laughs> Say waman. Saksai means when your hair stands, right. right? And waman comes from uma, and uma means head. So why it is the head with the hair standing or something like that? Is because the chronicles, they said that the Cusco city in Inca time used to have the silhouette of one big puma. So all the body was in the lower part and Sacsayhuaman was the head, right? There used to be two rivers actually, natural rivers, now there are streets, so, but the, the river are uh, running still underneath and joining the tail. And Sacsayhuaman is all here. And if you look, the wall was like this, right? Like a zigzaggy, like you said, okay, yes. because it's like the hair, hair. right, ah. standing. And also there is one building in circular, like a, a circular shape, that was the eye, right, okay. of this place. We are at uh, 3,400 meters. It is like uh, 11,200 feet. With the recent investigations that people did here, uh, people uh, found that this place, that actually is around like a circle, it used to be a big reservoir of water, like a big pool. Cusco, in Inca times, used to be the capital of the empire. In the capital used to live the most important people. The Inca is like the king, he was considered the son of the sun god. And all the royal families, all the noble people, all the most important people. Water was very important. So actually, the chroniclers, they describe Cusco city in Inca times as a modern city today, because actually all the houses, they used to have a kind of plumbing system, right? It means that they built so many aqueducts and channels that was running throughout uh, through the houses. But to make sure that they have water all the time, they need to build a big reservoir like okay. this. And how we know that it was a big reservoir? Well, this and uh, the soil he be much deeper and we have for example kind of tunnel actually right, right. right? Oh. so actually that was a drain that it was deeper so they need to build something like that and maybe there were more of those the level of the water right and not okay. other floods and also actually in some old town there there used to be like a small aqueducts i don't know if you can see there well there are these aqueducts that they used to feed the reservoir with all the water. All the most important, a very, oh well, a very important thing we have to know about this place, Sacsayhuaman, right, is that what we are looking is just 40% of how big used to be this place. The archaeologists who did the, the investigations and the excavations and everything, they said that there are still many things undiscovered. And also, many things were destroyed by who? Spanish. Still, there are more things that this wall is still buried. So, if you will excavate, you will find probably a big wall. The way, right. no, the, the, the quarry was right here, all right? So, they only need to cut the rocks and to build the big walls or the temple that we are going to see now. me 
what is the most important or impressive building? I would say this is the most impressive building, just in a point of the architecture. Even more than about, Machu Picchu. Yeah, it's the architecture, right? Machu Picchu is really impressive and it's the most important place because it's like an impact uh, Inca place, an Inca town or Inca city, right? Because the Spaniards, they never found it, so they didn't destroy it, they didn't oh. touch it. Okay. Right? That's why. So, but the architecture here is just really unbelievable. All the theories about aliens start here. Really impressive to see how they cut the stones so well. Built the, the bottom stones. ones, then they added this vertical one, and then they cut those to fit. Because Doug's giving his building they didn't advice. Put anything between the okay. <laughs> yeah, so, first. Right? Okay. So you are not gonna be if you don't have any idea what are you gonna build. You right. have to design. You right. have to plan. They organize in different groups with different specialities. This stone, all right, it uh, is around. It's not precisely, but around 120. The Inca buildings are much more impressive for one reason. If any of these stones have the same shape. Right. All have very regular and quite weird shapes, like Egypt and Rome and others use the simple square brick. Right. It's much easier, right? right. To build. Right. But cut in this way and try to find another stone to fit exactly with that precision, right. that makes it much more difficult. When we build our regular buildings, right, houses, we use the square brick, right? So when we build the square brick, it's all straight lines, right? Yes. One line of bricks over another. So uh, when the earthquake, the energy of the earthquake, always we're trying to find ways, usually the joints, all right, of the bricks to escape, to go right away. So, because our straight lines, our buildings have straight lines, well, the energy of the earthquakes can go just to the right or to the left, just straight, right? So, if it happens and the earthquake is enough strong, it's gonna make wave the whole wall. And if it is too strong, it's gonna make collapse all the wall, all right? But what happened here? Because it's not a straight line, look, here, right? It's going here and then here, like that, right? Also here. Yeah. So well, it means that the energy of the earthquakes is going in different directions, and that is gonna dissipate, right, the impact of the earthquakes on these walls, and that will avoid that the whole wall collapse. Because instead to wave the whole wall, it's gonna make shake its stone in its position, right, and that will avoid that the wall fall uh, fell down. Now, is that the main square that they said was two blocks from our hotel? Yep. Yeah, that's so. down there is the main square, yes. We are overlooking Cusco City at Sachs A Woman, and it is a very important archaeological site, which we have lots of information on from our amazing guide, Miguel. And uh, it's a great view up here, so definitely got to come up to the top and check it out. This is stone. This is the stone lady. 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 This um, but you do need to bring your own tissues, so make sure you come prepared. So they actually have a, a, a small museum with oh, all the textiles okay. of the pre inca cultures and other cultures. Hi guys! And there's a little doggy visiting. House, you live with them too. Okay. So, well, Hi. she's gonna explain a little bit what they have in this place, okay? Okay, so you just kind of okay, thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Textil Suka. I am Jessica. Here I'm going to give you a short short tour. Okay. We are going to see here different kind of tapestries. So this family Sulka is working almost three generations making this kind of work. So they are very talented person who make this kind of work. So we are keeping alive this very ancient tradition. All made by hand because there is not any other way to get this one. It has to be by hand. So yeah. each of these tapestries, tapestries are taking six to eight months, just one piece. Piece first and over is embroidered by hand. All made by hand. Okay. All is cotton also. There's okay. not any other material. It has to be cotton. Okay. So we have the Nazca lines, the oh, okay. Then we have the Wadi. That is another uh, pre-Inca culture. It looks right. like a machine. And the color is how we get the cochinilla from this from this insect. It's a beetle. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We That's get an this insect. Color. Yes. It's in the cactus. Really? And that right now is dried. Right. So we have to grow in it. We have to boil it in a pot. Right. Okay. And look at the technique here. It's the yeah, same technique beautiful. we make. Look at this one. Uh, look at this one. This is painted. This is chunkai. Oh. It's another culture. And what I have here, look at these pieces here. Both are from chunkai. It's another pre-Inca culture. Uh, those are very, it's the same pattern, but the technique is different one. Look at that one. It's yeah, a, that's very cool. It's the most it's precious piece that we have here, the most uh, take more time, and uh, also is the most expensive one. How much is that one? Is yeah, four thousand. You know, it's almost one year working. One yeah, oh, yeah. No, so you can see that. You can. Yeah. This okay. is Inca textile. So this is the famous Inca's alphabet. Right, many experts call as well the Incas calendar or secret writing of the Incas. Each of these boxes has a full information, it has complete idea, but nowadays we cannot read it. And now, I'm curious, how much is something like that? Uh, this one it's uh, 2800 dollars. Okay. Right, it's just one piece, there is not anything right. here. Look at the work. Oh, it's one piece, these aren't together. It's just, no, oh, it's just that's, one piece. That's amazing. Those are colonial ones. As you can see, those pieces uh, doesn't have any gods, doesn't have any any Inca, so those are more flowers, more animals, so it's completely different one. What I have here, Ooh. these pieces are kipus. These are countenances. Oh, like an abacus. Really? Right. This is pre-Inca also. Yeah. So they have all number information here. Oh, so that is, yeah. each knot represents uh, numbers, hundreds, thousands, millions. A lot of knots, a lot of information. These pieces here are modern art. We call paintings because looks like a paintings, but are weaving, are made by hand in a loom. Well, here I have, this one here is acrylic one, synthetic one, touch this one, yeah. and this is a real alpaca. Okay. And it's alpaca much cold. cold right, that's the best way to recognize. Has to be very cold, uh, or you feel with this condition because it has natural oil. That's okay. why you feel cold and say, okay. Mm -hmm. And when you put it on, keep your temperature body. Just your temperature okay. body. Right. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank Please you. Keep looking okay. at shopping again I'm standing around and she's shopping that's how it rolls this is a beautiful hat this is an $800 Vicuna hat that I'm not gonna get but it is super beautiful and you can feel the quality it is a super beautiful hat I, I love it and this is an alpaca sweater baby baby alpaca and maybe I'll practice sweater I mean they're their um, work here is amazing. It's very beautiful. So I'm very pleased with my shopping. We got some Christmas presents. We got a cute little guy because you can't not have one of these cute little guys. And the the what what they're made of is all baby alpaca. So that's what's really unique about this. It's amazing quality and I'm so excited for their Christmas presents as well. Thank you! Thank you, you guys are great! Awesome!
Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye. So we are leaving the mountains of Cusco, heading into the Sacred Valley and heading to Pisac. Why don't you show them what's out yeah. the window there? the first view of the Sacred Valley. Oh, that's right. pretty. Now, is there somewhere along here just to shoot a picture in between these yeah, mountains? Uh, little little hangover right here? Yeah, uh, Perfect. Beautiful. These mountains are amazing. Yeah, those are the Andes. It's oh, very beautiful okay. and there's no sign that says no drones. Doug's very excited. It is no drone. fun, please. Drone, <laughs> drone. <laughs> Drone time and no fun police. <laughs> <laughs> like how high up do you think we are right now? At 10,500 feet. Oh, so we haven't dropped yeah. too much yet. Yeah. Okay. No, so yet. Still... Yeah, still, you see how deep is the yeah. valley? So yeah, when we get to the valley, it's... But the valley is still 7,000 feet, right? Yeah, the valley yeah, is 7,000 feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They have like these fun little vehicles, like that one straight ahead. Like this? Yeah. We Is that call the taxi? Uh, moto, moto taxi. Moto taxi. It's just like a, a motorbike actually, <laughs> but right. with three wheels and. Town. Well, this is one of the entrance to the market. Oh. So basically the market is a lot of these stands right in the street. So what you're looking right here, yeah, it's not the best quality. Right, okay. Definitely not. But it's, <laughs> but it's good if you wanted to like grab a fun hat for someone or something like that. Made this to all my people. They say, okay, think very well what you, why you are going to buy. Right. Because it's nice and how it looks. Yeah. But think if you are actually going to use in, in your country. Yeah. I mean, not for only for here. For example, if you buy this kind of well, I don't know, this kind of sweater right. with the llamas, probably yeah. you're not going to wear that in right. the United States. Right? Well, now, see, here's the question. <laughs> see those sweaters right there? I had tried them on at that store. They're, it's the exact same design. Yeah, no, but this is the quality of the wool. Okay. Uh, the, the amount of alpaca wear so do they the take the design, the same designs and stuff? Yeah, bathrooms and designs can be the same, but right. Uh, how much uh, paka wool has the cloth? Oh, okay, right? I got you. <laughs> In average, this, the cloth made here, it have a uh, thirty percent uh, alpaca, oh. and then it's mixed with uh, synthetic or other kinds of wools. Okay, I got you. So that's why you can kind of feel a little bit. It feels a little bit soft. Yeah. Looks 
see something. You do. What does he see? Here we can see five or six. Yeah, actually, no, but you see this also is a different kind. So you said there's 3,000? Longer. Yeah, varieties. in Peru, but most of this, I never seen the 3,000, right? Because actually there are many varieties that grow in quite remote lands and the people grow for their sell. They never sell in the markets, right? Okay. So this is also where people can come to eat. It's very, well, very cheap, of course, in the market. But that's nice. So, section so I lived in the Caribbean for a couple of years too so I kind of know local markets and yeah so it's probably in South America most of markets are priced these things here that is potatoes as well mm -hmm. can I... we call them moraya. are they pink? Moraya, it's a uh, no it's a uh, it's a dehydrated potato this is the fruit section. Anything unique to Peru? Unique to Peru? Uh, let's see. What is this? It's a kind of mix of a pepper with cucumber or something. It's, we call tomate pepino. So it's like a kind of cucumber, but it's more like a fruit. It's not exactly like a cucumber. Okay. But the really native fruit to Peru is this one. It's called granadilla. It's the same family of the pomegranate. Different inside because inside is not like a purple thing. It's more gray and it's like a, the texture is like a jelly with many seeds. But it's very sweet. It's very interesting. The flavor okay. is very nice. This is lucuma that is very native to Peru. And this is called... Uh, I forgot the name. Oh, I <laughs> you don't forget anything. You seem uh, like you know everything. Chirimoya. <laughs> yeah, chirimoya. It is chirimoya. So it's also very sweet. Inside is white with very big black seeds. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, we have some chocolate to try. Milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. Dark seventy percent. Coca leaf. Spicy. Oh. White chocolate. I'll go with. I'll go with milk chocolate, right? I'll try some. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's good milk chocolate. Oh, thank you. Chocolate shampoo. Chocolate beauty products. Hit me with what you got. I got empanadas. And did you get some chocolate? Dos. Si. What'd you get? Uh, I got pineapple covered in dark chocolate and apricots and chocolate. Okay, because it was really good. It was really good? Yeah. Okay, definitely check out the, cho the Chocolate Museum. They um, have also some cooking classes or chocolate making classes. And really good. Selling panadas here. <laughs> you already oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but this is how the colonial ovens look like. There are places like this ah. with colonial. Uh... Oh, they get the oh, guinea pigs there. right there. Okay. Farms of guinea pig actually here. It's like a still I have to say, this guy is probably the biggest guinea pig I've ever seen. He is huge. He is like triple Everybody the size. Yeah, guinea pigs are big, I don't know. For me, that is normal. That is a huge yeah. guinea pig. Did you already order that or did he have it all ready for you? 
Yeah, when I come, look at the guinea oh, pigs they okay. are cooking there. Yeah, this guy, he's like that big guy over there. Oh yeah, these like com feel completely different than mine, like a thousand times different. Yeah. It is yeah, so yeah. crazy. I mean, soft, but not the same. No. Oh, is it really? No. But... Wait, how good? Let me good. Right. <laughs> you know, when you wear the clothes that is really made for well, parka, it needs that it will keep the temperature almost the same, so it will protect you from cold. But when it's warm, also it's not gonna be very hot, right? Okay. That's another characteristic of this kind of. Wood. It is rainy here in the Sacred Valley, and we are heading to Tampa de Inca, which is our hotel. We had a great day, seeing lots of things. Vamanos! I always think you're saying like made up words. <laughs> so we are driving. We are driving. No, we're not we're driving. Driven. Miguel is driving. Miguel is driving. <laughs> so just kind of letting you know in terms of distance, going from Cusco to Urum Tambo. No, Urum Urum Baba. Urum Baba. Okay. So going from Cusco to Urumbamba would be about an hour and 20 minutes normally, but we have spent um, a good part of our day cruising stopping. around. Yeah, Exploring. stopping and cruising around, stopping at really cool places. We just saw a festival. Really great day. We are arriving at Tambo del Inca. Los ingreso, uh, Nicole. Yeah, probably yeah. one of the best in Peru. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 